What's up guys? So Nvidia finally made Nvidia Reflex available to gamers, specifically in Call of Duty, Modern Warfare and Warzone. Um, so I think it was in the latest update that they were able to bring in a new setting into Warzone for Nvidia Reflex uh, and low latency. So if I go into options and graphics inside of Warzone, and if you have an Nvidia graphics card capable of using NVIDIA Reflex, I have a GTX 1660 Super. Um, you'll see an option under NVIDIA Highlights called NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. So right now I have it set to enabled and boost. So disabled low latency, low latency mode is disabled. Uh, no NVIDIA Reflex enabled. You have NVIDIA Reflex enabled for Call of Duty. And then the final one is enabled plus boost. So this enables low latency mode with NVIDIA Reflex. And it also uh, allows the GPU clock frequencies to stay high, even when the CPU is bottlenecked, uh, which can reduce latency, but it will also increase your GPU power draw. So of course you're going to be using more power overall for your system, but you're going to be having less latency overall from your system. So that's what I have it on right now. And Nvidia also recently rolled out their beta version of the GeForce Experience software. Uh, so. GeForce Experience, probably a lot of NVIDIA users know, allows you to do screen recordings, uh, in-game photos with NVIDIA Ansel, um, display all of your game settings, everything on the screen, stream, record everything from uh, GeForce Experience and their overlay. So now if we go ahead and we open up GeForce Experience, you're greeted with you know, the GeForce Experience settings page. Uh, here you have your in-game overlay settings, uh, as well as one feature, which is enable experimental features. So if I go into the normal overlay uh, without enabling the experimental features, what you're gonna see is the typical layout from GeForce Experience. And if I go into settings and I go into HUD layout, these are all the options you can display on the screen while you're recording or streaming. So you have camera status indicator, FPS, all of that stuff. But if we enable the experimental features, so if we go back into there, enable those, you'll see you have the latest experimental feature updates. And now we open up GeForce Experience. You're greeted with this performance tab and you're also greeted in HUD layout with performance. So this will show you either your latency uh, in your overlay, uh, the advanced setting, which is like GPU clock, CPU clock, all that information, just FPS, basic. You can do all of those from here. But what I really wanna show you guys first is definitely this performance view. So if we open up performance, you're treated with an awesome little overlay. So you get GPU clock, temp, voltage, utilization, power draw, fan speed, memory clock, CPU utilization, you get all of that right there. You can also, which is a new experimental feature within this, uh, is enable automatic tuning. So this will allow for the best overall system latency. As long as you go ahead and you turn that on, it will tune your system to get the most out of NVIDIA Reflex and the low latency stuff, as well as maybe a little bit of a boost in FPS. But you also get some settings from like an overclocking perspective. You get maximum power draw, voltage maximum, as well as temperature target. So all of that is here. You also have a fan speed target. So you can play around a little bit with the overclocking stuff without you know overclocking your core or overclocking the memory. You can do some manipulation to the GPU that Nvidia actually enables with this GeForce Experience performance monitor, which is a really, really nice feature. So here we go, we got the new view with the hand on the mouse. We are boosting to 1875. Uh, on the GPU and our power consumption is 117 watts, CPU utilization 36%. So this system is an 8700K and the 1660 Super. So should be plenty of performance. Uh, and what you I want you guys to look at is just how quick the game responds to my hand movements. Uh, honestly, pretty crazy. It's probably not as noticeable on your screen. I'm also playing at 144 FPS. Of course, I'm only hitting around 83 FPS in this game. But overall, I am super, super impressed with how just how quick this game feels with the low latency mode enabled. Uh, honestly, pretty crazy if I don't say so. Um, but what I want to do now is just enable just enable reflex 
low latency and disable boost and see how much that drops our GPU clocks, if at all, because our CPU is not bound uh, in any means at all. And if we drop power consumption as well, I don't think we will, but just want to see. So nope, uh, boost clock stayed the same, power consumption right around the same. Uh, so we're mostly GPU bound at this point, not CPU bound. So the GPU bounded or the Nvidia Reflex low latency with boost and Nvidia Reflex low latency are going to act exactly the same unless you have a lower end CPU with a higher end GPU and you're not getting uh, as high or you're getting too much utilization on your CPU. But right now, this is playing really smooth and my inputs feel great. Uh, so what we're gonna do is disable low latency and we'll see if you guys can tell. I know I can for sure tell the difference between the two when they're on and when it's off. But let's take a look at this. Let me bring my performance, let's bring that back up. There we go. So no difference, maybe a little bit less on the GPU power, uh, maybe using five watts less at this point. Uh, I'm assuming that is due to the disabling of uh, NVIDIA Reflex in game, but I don't know if you guys can tell how much, it, it's definitely noticeable to me, but I doubt you guys can really tell. So I just quit out of the game, I quit out of Warzone, and what I really, really wanna test is the performance monitoring, performance tuning, the automatic tuning that is available now in GeForce Experience. So I already enabled this in the past, never got a scan through. Uh, I, I ended it before it ever went through so I could show you guys what kind of performance boost we get, uh, what kind of megahertz improvement we get in the core clock. So what am I, what I'm going to do is just hit enable automatic tuning. Now, when you hit this, you're going to be prompted with something that says, you know, you have to agree that overclocking the GPU could cause system instability and stuff like that. Um, I'm not too worried about it. It is the NVIDIA software itself. It's GeForce Experience overclocking the card. You don't really have the human error to push the card too far. So I'm not super worried about that, but we'll see what kind of scan we get. Hopefully we get around hundred megahertz improvement. Uh, that would be awesome. We should hopefully see a decent FPS boost if we can get a nice overclock on our card. And of course this is a beta software, so you may have some issues with it to get it to scan and get it to actually, you know, give you a result. But as soon as I get it overclocked, I will show you guys the results. And there we go, we just finished up. And as you can see, we hit plus 146 megahertz on our GPU, which is awesome. So let's hop back into Warzone with our new overclock and see what happens. We'll see what kind of performance we get. So let's hop back into Warzone with our new overclock and see what kind of performance we see. So now that we have the auto tuning completed and we had that 146 megahertz boost, we're now sitting at 1935 megahertz from 1890. Uh, we also got a 200 megahertz boost on the memory clock, power consumption pretty much the same. And now we are actually getting that FPS number, the 99% FPS and our render latency. So let's go ahead and dive in. So we're sitting at around 11, 12 mil milliseconds. We're gonna play a little bit with our GPU boost and our low latency enabled. And then I'm gonna disable uh, NVIDIA Reflex and see if that render latency number increases or what happens uh, in the game. I'm, I'm curious now. But the ability to auto overclock at the click of a button, you let the computer go ahead the, the software goes ahead, it scans at different frequency levels, and then it tries to make sure that everything is stable. 
Saw a guy over here. So hopefully we win the gulag. So what we're going ahead and going to do now that we won the gulag, is just go into options, go to uh, boo -boo -boo -boo, NVIDIA reflex and disable it and hit apply. So we just jumped up to 16 to 17 milliseconds of render latency, which is almost double, now almost 20 milliseconds. So almost double the render latency of what we were seeing with NVIDIA Reflex turned off. So let's go ahead and turn that back on. Well, now that we're on the ground, it depends really on the scene, but we're sitting at around 17 milliseconds right here. I'm gonna drop down low, 17 milliseconds, and let's enable it with boost and see if that drops. So now we're sitting at 11. So around, I, around a 30 to 40% decrease in render latency, which is quite a big jump when you think about it. And it's lowering your overall system latency as well, not just the render latency. So big improvement overall. We don't get that exact number, but we do get the render latency at least inside of our panel. So that is cool. No doubt, no doubt. So I think if, if you guys have, again, one of these NVIDIA cards, and you want to download the beta, you want to auto-tune, you want to use NVIDIA Reflex in a game like Warzone, definitely go ahead, get the performance auto-tuner installed, get that performance monitoring enabled, um, and then enable NVIDIA Reflex in your game, and I'm sure you will definitely notice it. So if you guys have any questions, any comments about the process or anything like that, leave them in the comments below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so you can stay up to date on my latest videos.